Python Chapter 9, Lesson 4. For today's, for today's lesson, we're going to go back and look at the Math Tutor program, and we're going to make it a game for two players. First, let's look at the code that we did in Chapter 5. So this one is all about functions and parameters. And your code looks probably something kind of similar like this. And I want you to think about it for a second. If this is your code, how would you adapt it for two players? Because this is definitely a one-player game. I wanted to put in two players. What are some things that you're going to have to do? You'd need more than one count. You'd have to be a, have a way of keeping track of whose turn it was. You'd have to get results for both players. You have to determine who's the winner. You know, it, it could get a little complicated. You might have to come in here and make up a few more functions. You might have to modify what you have here. Uh, the, the problems themselves work fine, but adapting this main section for two players, you know, not quite a simple task. Now let's take a look at our code that we just did for Lesson 3. I opened my program from Lesson 3 and I copied and pasted it into a new code sculptor. And I suggest that you do the same. So you have your old one, and we're going to make some modifications to this for our new lesson. Our new lesson, for, our new program for Lesson 4 is just going to be our math two-player game. So I'm even going to change the name and the date. So we have our code from Lesson 3, and now I want to take a look at this code and change it for a two-player game. Let's just start here in our main program. It's going to work great. Oh, we don't have this code. You've already taken that out. This is going to work great for one player, but can we easily adapt it for two players? And the answer is going to be yes. So right now I've made one instance of the math tutor. I'm going to change this instead of problem. I'm going to put player. I'm going to have player one, and let's just make another instance of this for player two. And the computer is going to keep track of the two different counts. I don't even have to make a variable for it because player one is going to have its own count and player two is going to have its own count. And the computer keeps track of them separately. So just by creating two different instances, they're going to be handled separately, but they're going to be created the same. I can still ask for how many problems. I can still have a for loop. And this is going to be pretty much the same, but I want to do it for two players. So I'm going to make some more functions. This is a way that you're going to be able to see that you can still have functions in your main program section. I'm going to have methods, and they're going to have different things. So I'm going to keep all my methods, but I'm going to come and take some of this code and make it into its own function. And let's just call this our math, our random problem. And I'm going to be passing in which player, and I'm just going to call it dude, which dude is playing. And the dude is going to be an instance. I'm going to take everything that we have here inside this up to this point, And I'm going to put this into my function. So I'm just going to cut it from there, paste it right here. And I'm going to need to put in, um, instead of problem here, because that was the name of my instance, and now it is dude. So which of the dudes, one of them, is going to call these other methods. I'm just going to make that little change here from problem to dude, and dude here is my parameter, and it's going to be the instance, the object. Now what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to call my random problem. First time I'll call it for my player 1, and then I'll call it again for player 2. And it's that simple. I've got a two-player game. I'm going to have a little bit of a, an issue down here when it comes to the results. Right now I have problem, but which results do I want? For player one or for player two? Well, let's do the same thing that we did up here. I created a function for it, and I can pass in the parameter of the two different players. So let's just create a function called show results. And I'm also going to put dude here, so I could put in either player. And I'm going to take my code from right here and put it right here. Okay. 
and then just like it did up there where I have problem that was my instance and now I have dude so I'll have my dude call the, uh, invoke the methods and then where I took it off from right here I'm just going to call show results twice I shouldn't capitalize show so let me undo that So I'll call show results for player one, and then I'll call show results for player two. Let's go ahead and try this program out. I better do my indenting properly. Issue there. I've just fairly simply adapted this um, program for two players just by adding in a second instance and then creating a couple of functions where I can pass in my object as a parameter and I didn't have to do anything else even in my class. So a fairly simple way of using your class and your methods to make it from one player to two player. Could I easily do three players? You know, sure. Let's give it a try. So how many problems? Let's just do three. And I've got, now see here's the question. I'm having problems, but which player is it? Right now you have to say, well, it's player one. And this is player two, player one, player two. Wouldn't it be nice? Oh, and then I've got an error, so I just have to be careful with. So if, if I have number here, I'm going to have to pass in number as a parameter, and then also when I call it. So show results down here not, needs not only the player, but it also needs the number. But we've got a bigger issue. I didn't know here when I was playing which player it was the turn of. So I could put in uh, another print statement with a comment, but a nice user-friendly way to do this it would be to add the name. So let's go ahead and do that first in our name function. Let's ask the person what their name is. So name1 will be input name of player1. And I don't need to do an int because this is a string, and let's ask for the name of player two. Now it would be nice if I actually used these names in my methods so I can adapt my constructor right up here to include a parameter from the function. So I'm going to include this right up here, name and then once it gets passed into my constructor, I need to use it as an instance variable. So I'm going to add a name instance variable, self.name equals name. So whatever is passed into this constructor will be the value of this local variable now. So I can pass in the name of player1, and that will go into the player1 object, and the name of player2, and then go into the player2 object. So I'll make it kind of nice. I've got the name now inside, and all the methods can use this. So where might I want to use it? Well, I might want to use it when I am um, doing the problem. So I could put, make the name, use the player's name as part of the math problem. I've got math problem equals, and I've got a string here. Maybe I want to put the person's name in front. So I'm going to put in self.name, and that's a string, plus... Uh, maybe I want to put in a space with a colon, so it kind of would indicate that it is the person's name is going to show and then the problem. And I can do this in all three methods. I'm just going to copy that, and put it there, and put it there. And now whenever the problem shows, the name of the person will show as well. Now that we've included the name as part of the class, so it's going to be created with the object, let's go ahead and run it and see how it works now. So let's just have Anne be the first player and Bob be the second player. And now what happened was, since I added a parameter right here, I need to add an object, I mean I need to add an argument when I create this instance. So Math Tutor now takes an argument. So I'm going to put name one right here. And I'm going to put name 
two right there. So when I change it up there, I need to change it here in, when I'm creating this class. Well, let's try it. The name of player one, we're going to say Ann and Bob. And let's just do three problems. Now you can see that this is Ann's turn, and she has five minus ten. And Bob's turn, and he has one times one. And I'm going to get it wrong on purpose here. We have Ann is eight plus seven. And we have Bob. And we have Ann's turn again, and we have Bob again. Now over here we're showing correct and when Bob missed one it showed him what the right answer was. We've got number correct, but I don't have a lot of information here. I would probably want to know that this was Anne's and this was Bob's. And even when it's correct, I can put in the person's name so I can say that Anne was correct, Bob was correct, so on and so forth. So let's just put use the name a few more times here. When I'm saying correct, let's come here. I say correct and I can also use the person's name. So I'm going to put comma, and I'm going to do self dot name. So just it's that simple. And now it's going to say correct Ann or correct Bob. Now when I have printed the results, that's down here in a function. And the function does not have access to the self dot name. Now it does have access to name one and name two if I want to pass it in, and I can do that. But another thing I can do is use since I already have dude here and this object does have an, a name variable, I want to just use it. In order to do that I have to get it from the um, class. So let's just create another method in here just like I have get correct and get percent I can do a get name. And I'm just going to need self for this and I'm going to return self.name. Now it might seem kind of silly because I have name here name one and I could use name one I have to pass it in as a parameter if I just return the value from the object I don't have to pass in any more parameters so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that I've got I want to print the person whose results am I getting so I'm gonna say print and let's just do a print um, results of and then I can do get um, dude dot get name so just like I did get correct and get percent and it, it returned it from here, it'll return the name. So let's try it again and see if it's just even a little bit more user friendly with just a few changes like that. So we're going to have Ann and we're going to have Bob and we're going to do three problems. So Ann starts off and then we're going to miss Bob's again. And we're going to do a few more problems here. So we've got correct and, and Bob missed one, correct and correct. So we've got, it's giving us a lot of information here. And we've got results of Anne, we've got results of Bob. So just by doing a few simple changes by including name, I've made a really friendly, user-friendly two-person game. Now there's a couple more things we can do. We've got the results. We want to declare a winner. And we can do that fairly easily. Let's just create another function for this. I don't need a method because that's for one class. I want to compare two different things. So I'm going to create a function in my main program section. And I want to declare winner. So who won? And I'm going to have both of the players. So I'm going to say dude1 and dude2. I want to compare the two. And I can simply do this by, by getting the correct and see who had the most correct. So just by passing in the two op objects here, I can use the getCorrect method and compare them. So I can say if dude1.getCorrect equals equals dude2.getCorrect, then it's a tie. But I need to use my, don't forget to use your parentheses in here when you invoke your methods. So if they are equal, then I want to print it is a tie. Okay, and then let's do an elif dude one dot get correct 
is greater than do two dot get correct. Then dude one wins, right? But we want the name of dude one. So I'm going to say dude one dot name or get name is the winner. Okay, and then my else will just be that dude two will be the winner. So I've got my declare winner right here. And let's go ahead and call it after we show the results. And I'm going to pass in player one and player two. Okay, so once again, a simple little change, passing in my objects, and hopefully everything goes right. So we've got Anne, we've got Bob. We'll just do three problems. We'll make sure that Anne wins. All right, so Anne got all three right, and Bob only got one right, and Anne is the winner. Once again, this is a, the power of classes with just a few slight modifications back here in the implementation that the user didn't have to know. And then adding in a few functions, everything's working great. Now, the last thing we can add to this program is a loop so they can play it again. Maybe they want to have multiple matches to see if different players can win different matches. So we're, we've done while loops before. This is something that hopefully you're fairly familiar with. And let's go ahead and put this into a loop. I don't need to ask for the names of the players again. I don't even really need to create the player over again. Just this part. So asking for how many problems, up to declaring the winner. I can do this inside a loop. So I'm going to add in a variable for keep going. And this is a technique that we've used before. So I'm going to set keep going as true. And I'm going to have while keep going. And then I just want to indent everything inside the loop and then ask if they want to keep going. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly do this. And then the next thing I want to do is ask if they want to play again. Well, there's a couple of things involved with that, so I'm going to go ahead and make a function for play again. So I don't want any of my functions to be very long. So I'm going to call this a play again. And what I'm going to do is use a variable like turn, and I'm going to make this an integer, and I'm going to ask, do you want to keep going? Play again. And I'm going to say 1 equals yes, and 2 equals no. So we're going to ask them, and then we're going to use an if statement. So if turn equals equals 1, they do want to play again, then keep going is going to be true. But what else do I want to happen? If, if they do want to play again, I might want to reset the counters so that it's a new match, you know, they're doing new problems, who, which, how many do they have right? So I do want to reset the counters. I don't have a way of doing that yet, but remember we did something like this in our clickers. So I just quickly added a new method for reset where I'm just going to put correct back to zero. So you can add that in fairly quickly just as you're going through and you want to modify the class. You just have to add a method. I didn't even have to go back and change the code. I just added a new method for the behavior that I need it to do. So after I do keep going equals true, I can do dude one dot um, reset and dude two dot reset. Now if I'm going to do it like this, I need to pass in dude1 and dude2 as parameters. So let's go ahead and do that. Now what if they don't want to play again? My else is just going to be the keep going is going to equal false. Then I want to return keep going. So let's put the word return. So I just made this a return function. When I call it, I just have to assign it to something such as keep going. So keep going 
equals play again. And then remember I have two arguments, player one and player two. So ask me if I want to keep going. And when I stop, maybe I want to have some kind of a print statement. Print and careful with all my spelling here. Thanks for playing. Then you know the game is over. Let's just give this a quick try. So we're going to have Anne and Bob. And we'll just do two problems. Anne will get hers right. And we will get this one right. And we'll get this one wrong. Okay, so Anne was the winner. We'll play again. And let's do two more problems. And this time we'll let Bob win. So we'll get this one wrong. And this time it said that Ann only got one right and two got and Bob got two right. So you can see that our counters got reset and we will not play again. And thanks for playing. So we've gotten through this whole program and just with a little bit of time, adding in a second instance, just a few slight modifications, and fairly easily, because we have a class here that does all the behaviors we were able to add a two-player game. So what are some more things that you can do on your own? Well, uh, could you make some of these functions, maybe the random problem or the show results, could you make them a method instead of a function? That's something you can give a try. You can't really do it for declare winner or play again because they use two objects. But this one's a single object, so one modification you could make is to make this a method instead of a function. And then you'd have to call it appropriately. So that's something you can try. Another thing you could try doing is having an overall correct. So I do reset self-correct for each new match, but what if I want to keep track of all the matches? How many do they have correct? And then have an overall winner. So that's something that I also encourage you to give it a try. So before you turn this in, try doing a couple of things on your own to make this program uniquely yours. And then turn it in and let me see what you were able to accomplish.